Oh, oh, what? Oh, what? 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 Oh, I've been found out. I wasn't reading a comic book. I was making my life better this whole time. Nothing in your book about battling Galactus. Nothing in here. I'm a little disappointed. Are you sad? Should we add some more clues about that? Yeah, basically, if you have, you know, an interdimensional, gigantic, world-eating creature coming after you, I need to know how to handle that. That's, that's um, in the imagination chapter, I think. Or, you know, you just write another one. You can write okay. another book. We'll write Easy. it together. Yeah, we'll do another one. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me about um, your background that led you to the audition. Yeah, I was just an actor waiting tables. Uh, living life in New York City, doing some Shakespeare. I had just done, I think, uh, Much Ado About Nothing and doing a friend of mine's play. I went to, to um, high school at this place called Interlochen Arts Academy, magical little spot uh, up in like the, the northern part of the lower peninsula of Michigan. So it's like the heart of the middle. Um, and yeah, I, 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 you know, I was, I, was, I was living the dream. That's all I, that's all I really wanted to do in the world. Um, still kind of all I want to do in the world. I kept my expectations simple. I calcified at 18. Is that How did you get the bug? What was the first thing you did that made you be like, this is what I want to do with the rest of my oh, life? I, that, I was very lucky to know exactly what I thought I should do with my life when I was in eighth grade. I took a drama class because my brother was talking to me about a drama class that he had taken. And so um, my teacher, Mary Johnson, basically is, is responsible for changing my whole life. She was also my Spanish teacher. But um, she was my drama teacher and I did the one act plays that we were all required to audition for. And they chucked, someone had to drop out of another one. So it's like I did, they chucked me into the second one too. And I, I don't know, I was just doing my best. I was having fun. Um, and, uh, and there were girls in the class. So, you know, I kept my attendance uh, uh, pretty regular, sure. uh, basically, you know. Well, I had all the right priorities. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but then after that first day of performing, like I just knew. Like once we had finished and I went out for curtain call, like everything was a blur. I couldn't, I couldn't focus on anybody like, you know, but I just, I just knew in my heart that that's exactly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to have made that a reality. My wife laughs at me because she was like, you know, when we met, um, we met when I was already doing Blue's Clues, but uh, she, she, I don't know, she, she's um, the child of Cuban expats uh, who, you know, their life journey was basically like having everything taken away from them at some point. And so there's this, she, she basically asked me the question, like, well, what if it all goes away? Like, what's your backup plan? And I was like, nah, I don't have one. She's like, really? Nothing? Like, nope, I got nothing. <laughs> and uh, somehow, so, right? I don't know. Yeah, you I mean, it. you have to do it. Yeah, to me, that made sense. Well, I've talked to Steve a little bit about um, when you use your mind and take a step at a time, you can do anything you want to do. And he had some uh, controversial thoughts about it. What do you what do you think about telling kids that? I, I think as long as you, as long as you say you've got to use your mind and take a step at a time uh, at a time, then yeah, um, there, there will be limits, but there are limits on all of us. And so let's say, yeah, you're not going to be able to necessarily fly the exact same way a peregrine falcon does with your own physical person. But who knows, you might be able to uh, learn what you can and go to flight school or something like that and break the sound barrier and some kind of mechanized bird that you stuff yourself into Chuck <laughs> Yeager style. You can do that. Um, you know, it's, it's, so it's like, you, know, you might find that the dream you realize isn't the one that you had initially, it will adapt. But I think, um, you know, there's qualifiers on it, but, uh, but, but, uh, you know, at the same time, if you don't, if you don't dream, like we talked about before, like whatever's, whatever's next won't be possible because we only will be stuck with what is. Um, tell me about the audition. Tell me what you remember about the Blue's Clues audition. My very first audition that I that I did, you know, and I met some of the people in the the Nick Talent department that I later worked with for years, and they're just like amazing people. Yeah, Michelle Levitt and 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 Melissa Chusid and you know Jill Greenberg Sands and stuff like that. These people that I, you know, they were just so nice and welcoming to me because because like I said, I didn't have a lot of knowledge of what Blues Clues was walking into it, so I was just like, well, I'm just gonna do whatever. I was in between shifts at the restaurant that I worked at, and so I basically like 
ran away after a lunch shift and before a dinner shift to go make this audition across town. Um, I was working at this uh, uh, Italian restaurant on 2nd Avenue and like 51st Street. Uh, Pescatore, you should still go, it's still there, it's delightful. And so they walked me through it and I, I had the idea that they were like, try to talk a kid through brushing teeth. And all I could come up with was, I think uh, I was brushing, a, I wanted to make the teeth not jealous of each other. So you have to give each one attention. And that's what I, what I talked about. And so that was the very first audition. And, uh, and they were, you know, super, you know, awesome and nice and patient with me. I remember leaving. I was like, that was actually a fun experience. All right, good. Um, and then uh, later on, uh, I was still working at, at the same restaurant. And, um, but at that time, when I was, it was time, like, I don't know, what the fourth or fifth audition, there were a lot of them. Uh, when it came time for the screen test, uh, I had already auditioned also for Blair Witch 2, which at the time was a huge, big old crazy deal. I remember the industry was just nuts about it. And they were, they would give out the sides on, um, like on a temporary basis. Like they wanted to keep it so under wraps and, uh, uh everything was printed on, uh, red paper so that you couldn't photocopy it, you know? So it was like, they just, you know, now it's like somebody would take a picture with their phone and just like, you know, like put it on. <laughs> on social media and <laughs> it'd be done this amazing filmmaker joe berlinger was directing that and so i was so excited to meet him i was working at because one of my other jobs I, I got fired from every job because i did things like leave in the middle of the day to go do auditions um and so you know i i had also worked in this video store and so i had seen his documentary films which are all super gritty and intense and um uh also awesome uh but uh you know i was excited to meet him in person and it was this really intense audition um you know, it was like, it was another like weird one or whatever, because it was, it doesn't happen often in auditions, but me and the other actor, this, this woman, uh, we sort of like had to like half make out in the middle of the audition. So it was just like a new Pepsi challenge, like doing something like that. And like, you're there and like in this horror movie and then, okay. And I know like the next day I got to go out for, for Blue's Clues again, like, you know, like these, these things I'm like holding these in, that's a little bit of an actor's life. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine. You know, so then uh, that second audition uh, was the one where I really wish I could remember who first asked me. Uh, they, they, they came up to me and they said, do you know you sound exactly like Matthew Broderick? And I was like, I didn't know what to do with that. So, you know, my brain is spinning and spinning. And I was just like, uh, uh, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? Uh, and I just, uh, all I came up with was funny. People usually tell me I sound like Christopher Walken. And then Steve just did this like slow burn and the crew started laughing or whatever. And so it was like, that, that was my takeaway from that. It was just like knee jerk reaction. I was like, I don't know, chuck out the walking. Um, and so, uh, 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 you know, and Steve came up to me later on in between takes and he's like, okay. So when they tell us to go again, let's both do walking. And I was like, yes, let's do this. You know, cause it, you know, that was fun. Um, uh, and to bring this back to, to this, you know, it was like, a, uh, it has a little bit of that, you know, just go ahead and play and, and just take, whatever is given to you in that circumstance and go with it and have fun. The part of it where I use my mind and take a step at a time, that was all the preparation for the scenes. I know what I was doing, but then in the moment you have to be able to adapt. And so, you know, we, we did the scene and he's like, Hey, Joe, I'm like, yes, yeah, Steve. It's like, what do you want to do today? I'm like, I don't know. Let's ask blue. We're like just, there was these two walk-ins going back and forth. And I think, you know, everybody else is like, just trying not to bust it because they're laughing. That audition. More is walking now. I feel like you sang the song and everything. Oh, like, we did. Yeah. He's like, right? we are going to play Blue's Clues because it's a really great game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a VHS of it. I need to convert it. You do? You do need to convert it. It's, it's gold. I do. Because I remember yeah. we were sitting, I don't, was it Screen Gems? I can't remember exactly, but we were sitting up high watching down. So we could see you on the monitor for all yeah. the others. And we could also see down. And Tracy and I were crazy pregnant. And um, yeah. as you start <laughs> with the Christopher Walken, Steve looks at the camera at knowing that that, that, at us and he goes oh my god i love him like totally like he gets my vote this is it i'm choosing my own brother and this is who it has to be <laughs> what's funny is i have that tape but i've never watched that tape oh so funny i don't tape? enjoy watching myself necessarily all that much how did you get I have to tape? i don't know I right think we it, didn't it, have it, phones as an actor like sometimes when you stuff you've worked on things just arrive they just show up <laughs> There were so many things around that office. There were, there were like, you know, you take all of the, all of the felt that the art department was using to like, you know, like there were these drawers and drawers of like 
felt outfits for the salt family, you know, yep. like the spice family. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, like, there's so much stuff around that office and like cool stuff too, not to mention people's like personal stuff, a lot of which I stole. Um, <laughs> there's uh, no way that Christopher Walken tape was just hanging out in the felt drawer at Blue's Clues. No, no, but it's like, uh, so I, I think I got that, um, um, I think that might've been, I think Michelle Levitt maybe gave me that. Uh, I love it. Uh, years later or something like that. Um, so how did you feel when we said, okay, Steve thinks that you should have a different character name? I think that's, I think he mm. came from him because he was so, you know, it was hard for him, but then Josh ended up using Josh. So like, how do you feel about being Joe? I mean, a- now I just answer to both. It's not like there's really a separation, you know, sometimes people will be talking to me and, and if they're, if, if, if we're talking about Blue's Clues or if their kids are with them or something like that. And uh, even with my own brother, with my nephews, I think at some point they were like, you know, this is Joe or like, you know, or like it's Uncle Dono, but it's Joe. And so I was just like, ah, I just answer to both. It's never really been like a, no, this is really me. And I think, I imagine it must've been hard at times for Steve. You know, because he's like, oh, no, this is maybe he had to say his full name. This is Steve Burns. I instinctively do like a little mini, like I'm Steve Burns. Like I, my voice gets lower whenever I do a Steve voice. Do another line. Do it again. Do Steve again. <laughs> he's like, uh, no, that was that was Steve. I'm Steve Burns. <laughs> but then, OK, so he and I, this is funny. We'll uh, we'll send each other silly voice memos as Michael Barbaro from uh, from the Daily New York Times. We're like, Steve. It's Tuesday, January 24th. I want to talk to you about seltzer water. (laughs) Just like with all these pauses. I love it. I love it. What was the question Um, again? I, I know, ramble. right? Talking about Joe and not me- like it was okay that your name was Joe. I feel like so. Yeah, I didn't know. My favorite, one of my favorite stories is my husband, Greg, my brother, mm-hmm. you, Dave Palmer, I think, were all on the roof playing poker, right? Yeah. And the whole time, my brother's going, Joe, da da da, Joe. And like, you know, <laughs> the whole time. And then you just, you were just very serious, apparently, right? You're like, you know, my name is Donovan, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, like, I'm trying to keep my eyes on everybody's behavior. I'm in, I'm in a hand here. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think I'm not a very good poker player. I try, but uh, uh, I think the, the, the best I was was uh, not, you know, barely mediocre. Like, <laughs> well, it wasn't about, it was just about being fun. Um, yeah, well, I think the best way to get invited back to a poker game is to show up and not be very good exactly. and then not be a jerk about it when you lose. And then people will be like, ah, we'll take that dude's money. You've been okay. coming back. What was your um, favorite memory from, from Blue's Clues? What, do you have a favorite fan memory or favorite story? Oh, fan, well, I mean, the, the ones that are always, that meant the most was uh, uh, all of the, the times that I've been able to um, make an appearance for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Those are the ones like by a mile that have meant the most. Um, my favorite memory still to this day was like way early possibly was when when I first uh, was on when we first aired like the very first episode with me because um, I know that, that you all had had rented out a sports bar because there were just televisions everywhere and so we were at this place I don't know um, I'm gonna jump around in the middle of like all of my stories kind of jump around a little bit um, but when I was first hired you remember that play that I was doing yes um, and so it was you know a very kind of intense, strange play written by my friend Josh. Um, and just a weird one, especially to have you all come to go see when you just hired me to be the new guy on Blue's Clues. Because it's like these two dudes and they're like, they're, they're, there's murder in the conversation. It's an intense play. Um, and there's cursing all over the place. Uh, and, and so he and I would go to this same bar to watch like UFC fights. Basically, the same bar we rented. Exact out same bar. Yeah, Come this on. was one of the few places where you'd go. Like he was super into that stuff, and I'd like tag along, and I'm like, all right, let's, you know, like, you know. So already the location had this weird dissonance in my head, just in the terms of like, okay, now we're gonna go watch like this show that I've been working on for a couple of years now, and hasn't come out because that was also a strange experience. The show was huge, and I wasn't sure initially when I had been hired if I was able to talk about it a whole lot, because if, if you like let the cat out of the bag or whatever, that could potentially like 
you know, mess up all of that hard work. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort over a lot of people over a lot of time to make that show. It's and like so like you, just, you had to be like in hiding, like on the bathroom. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like the few people that I could kind of trust, they were like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Uh, uh, and, and so like this thing was finally about to happen. And so I'm in this bar because there's tons of TVs and like everybody, we had the place totally rented out. It's not like, I don't know, we're, there might've been a couple other people that were like, uh, can I just watch a baseball game? But we're like, like no, we're we're super disappointed. Oh, um, I, I don't remember those people. Cause I remember my little sister sitting right next to me. Um, and when I showed up on screen, she just had that, that whole moment of just being like, <laughs> she just accepted it. It was like this whole, like, but well, you're here, you're there, you're, you're here, you're there. You, oh. <laughs> like, Aww. you know, she was like, so cute. see these ticks. Uh, so cute. Yeah. Aw. I mean, I, yeah, that's tough to top. Uh, uh, that was, that was a really cool one. Um, there were a lot of fun ones. I really liked um, how kind they were with me with the music. Um, Cause I, I, at the time I tried really hard to work on my singing and, and it's weird. Like my wife basically has perfect pitch. All the other people in my family are much more musical than me. Um, and my, my older brother in real life can like play the guitar like a maniac. If you ever need somebody to play like some death metal at you, he's a, uh, you know, he's, he's good. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, and I, I can, I can just barely hang on to a tune. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 oh, it's you, did a great so, job. you were great. Well, I mean, I tried. And so it was like, uh, uh, I remember I would work with this voice coach, uh, Ron, Ron Shetler and, uh, and cause he was my voice coach back in acting school. Um, and so I was like, you know, he would help me like basically work on it. And so, um, you know, Nick Balaban, Mike Rubin and Jay Walter Hawks uh were so patient with me during all of the music sessions because you know i mean i'm just kind of doing my best but at the same time i'm you know i'm obviously not walking in there like Pavarotti or mandy patinkin or anything like that and clearly not like ray charles who they had worked with you know so i think there were times where your insecurity gets the best of you and i'm just like you know uh um or I'm like I'm, i wonder what they're thinking right now oh, you know and, and that's and that's a good thing to get over I think, you know, just to, to focus on whatever it is that you're doing, as opposed to focusing on what you think the other person is thinking, because chances are, if you're both working on something together, you both want it to be successful. Oh, so, really? you're, you know, I mean, you have no idea what other people are, are thinking. I mean, maybe sometimes it's obvious, yeah. but, but chances are, even if you think, you know, it's not hundred percent correct. Um, and so I, I was always very, very grateful when they were like, they would give me ideas or different ways to think about something. Um, I think I remember one time they just stopped us in the middle of a record and, and the records would take a long time, you know, cause you you'd do the music for a few different episodes at the same time. And I think they were like, they just played me some Ella Fitzgerald in the middle of the day or whatever. And she, they were like, just listen to how she is almost behind the music, but she's not. It's like she'll keep the time, but you think she's going to be late, essentially, because I think I think I was like singing everything on the beat as it happens, like I'm in Devo or something, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, which not to disparage Devo either, like, you know, like they're, they're amazing. I was very on time or like sometimes even ahead of the time of the beat. And so I think to to give me a, something that, that just got me out of my own head and got me more relaxed and, uh, um, you know, able to sing some of those songs. I, read, I told you that story when I was at a mix with Tracy and Peter, you remember Peter, the engineer was doing oh, yeah, yeah. And so she's barking and I'm, she's in the booth barking her stuff and I'm outside singing what she's barking. And I'm like singing along and doing the thing. And he stops and he looks at me and he goes, if you're going to sing like that, I cannot do my job. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's Oh, Peter um, was amazing. He was actually the most patient of all because he <laughs> had to be there in every single for every minute of every one of my sessions. Yeah, and he was the one really like, wow, I had forgotten that. It, it was actually Peter that played me that. It's so, wild. That's great. I oh, love yeah. that. I love that they inspired you that way. Wait, I need to circle back quickly. What happened to the Blair Witch Project? Oh, they offered me the job and I turned them down flat because I was like, nah. I'm gonna be no, no, they didn't offer it. <laughs> and then I thought, I'm like, uh, did you did you really not do that because you did Blue Clues? Yeah, I told them no. I said, no, 
get out of here. No, um, no, it's possible that they had already moved in whatever direction they moved in before, you know, you'd even offered me the job on, on Blue's Clues. But it's just, you know, there's two roads ahead yeah. of you. Like, they lead to two very different directions in no, some I mean, ways. I feel like you and Steve have that in common in the sense that he was on homicide in a rugby shirt that was striped right after Blue's Clues. Yeah. And we all like, and we all ordered Chinese food and watched it in my apartment. We were like, there's our guy. He's murdering someone. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. It has, oh, yeah. I think the fact that you would not just audition for kid stuff is another reason why we fell in love with you, right? Because there's a hmm. there's an edge. There's like a different level of um, you know, of of the way you're using your brain and the way in which you're delivering the lines with respect and not pedantic at all. You never talk down. I mean, it was amazing that you had never watched the show before auditioning, right? Because you made it your own, but you were really good at talking to the kids, right? Um, and that was hard. That was hard for us to find someone who can look at the camera, see through the camera and also not talk down and be playful and make it your own. I think actors are probably a lot more used to that now just because uh, um, any big major movie or whatever is going to have like the action movie and stuff like that. They all have blue screen or green screen elements to them. You know, there's, there's so much digital uh, as part of like a really, really big things. But, but the talking to the camera yeah. is a different element. That's, I feel that's like everyone different. does that now though. That's like all, right? But to, I think there's varying degrees of success with that, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, people have gotten more uh, comfortable with that dynamic of it. Cause it's like, what's funny is, is right now, I'm not even looking at you. Like I'm still looking at the camera, uh. um, you're here. See, all no, I do so is like, you. that's how I'm not good at it. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, but, it, but, but that's like, I, I almost want like, a, a, hey, inventors out there or kids that are inventing things, can you invent a screen that puts the camera right up in the middle of the screen so that I can look at my friend and not miss out, but then it'll look like I'm looking at them in the eyes. Can you do that? Can we figure that out? I don't know. I clearly am not the person to do it. We should, um, I think we should try to figure that out. Tell me about your movie career because you've done a, you've done some movies and you also did the Blues Clues movie, which was the most fun ever. So tell me what you think about the difference and also what your experience was like. There's an interesting thing happening right now because I, I did a movie, um, right. I filmed a movie right before we filmed uh, the Blues Clues movie in New York. And I filmed it out here in California and it was just uh, um, like four people and it's going to be screening um, at... Grandma's Chinese Theater, if you want to go. Uh, it's called Four for Fun, and it is not for kids. In New York no. at all, or just uh, in? No, in, in, in Los Angeles. Yeah. It's going to be part of the Golden State Film Festival. Oh, um, wow. Cool. Yeah. And so uh, uh, doing those two back to back, you know, was, was interesting. Uh, you know, and, it, and it's, it's such a funny thing because it's like when it comes to social media or whatever, it's an interesting challenge to be able to promote both. <laughs> Because I have to be very clear sometimes. It was like, hey, I did this podcast. It's uh, it's really great and it's a lot of funny. If you're a kid, don't listen to it. Just don't because uh, you won't like the result. Um, if you're a parent of a kid, don't listen to it together. <laughs> you know, like, like whatever. We're going to get into some dicey subject matter. And so it's like if you go see this movie, um, you, you know, there's a, a grown-up situations in the movie, shall we say. You know, like... And then I went from that to going to New York and filming with with Josh and Steve and you and that that was that was fun. That was a fast shoot, though. Wow. I remember just thinking there were certain days there that were insanely hot outside. Crazy and hot. it's I feel like it's a rare circumstance where you have so many people all working for the same exact thing at the same exact time. And there's all that focus. There's like, you know, like a, the director and the DP and they're like everybody that's worked on lighting it or something like that. And then everybody gets quiet so that it can be, you know, you can capture the sound and not like mess it up or whatever, even if you're in the middle of Central Park. And so if you're in the middle of Central Park, you got all the other people like on looking, but they also want it to be kind of cool. So they'll all be quiet at the appropriate times, most of the time. Um, and it's just like this, this clarity of focus where everything comes together and, um, it's, it's really fun to be able to be a part of that. Film, making movies is fun. Um, uh, and it's a similar thing, but different when you're involved in the theater in that, you know, everybody's in a dark space. Whole, the, all the audience is like huddled together and it's dark and we're all going to focus on this one, you know, story that's happening for right now. It's, I, I think that's primal. I think that gets down to some real deep, deep 
biological human needs. Well, you probably have to be present, right? You can't think about anything else when you're in that zone, right? Because you really have to stay in that moment. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It just, you know, it, it's it's uh, uh, and it's it's kind of cool because sometimes life is just so messy and foggy, and you're not, you know, if you're like me my brain could go in like a hundred different directions at once. And I'm like, well, which one do I need to be focusing on at this particular point in time? And unless you have somebody telling you to do it, like when you're in school, like saying, well, yeah, this assignment is due on this particular day. Um, I think part of experiencing life as an adult is you have to sort of make those choices for yourself. I don't know. It, it, that can be hard to do. To, uh, hard to know if, if, if you don't have uh, like a, a, a disciplined routine like uh, uh um oh oh we're getting back to it we're getting back to it <laughs> if you have routines then you set yourself up with like habits and things like that uh uh where where you you give yourself the steps to try to achieve something but but even so like in the in the the mix of day-to-day -day life you know you can have those larger goals but but it's rare that you'd be like okay this is happening right now um you know and we're all going to just do this thing right now I was like, you're so good in the moment too at improving some lines. Like you were had us like hysterical laughing. I can't remember the line. All right, you're the present store manager <laughs> now because <laughs> in the middle of Manhattan. Um, and Steve comes in to talk to you, but I forget now. I'm forgetting the line that you mm. said. I was like, oh yeah, ah, every day's a gift that you pay for. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you're like in the present store selling balloons and all the things and oh my god it was so funny the two of you together were ridiculous we left that whole back and forth um on the street of new york in of the two of you talking about carbs that's what we left in the movie as well because it was too funny <laughs> again just I mean, talk of each other it was just ridiculous oh right 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 yeah we're, we're, we're right. like our argument and it was like that was that was new territory too where i was like how snappy siblingy can we get with this dynamic right here because that that almost doesn't feel like something that happens in Blue's Clues, where you know, like uh, where you, where your your frustrations boil over to the point where you're, you might say stuff you regret. But we're just well, adult, with it. Right? I, it's being adult, so much fun to work with. You guys were so funny. So wait, and so then also with the new Blue's Clues and you, you were writing, you were directing. Like, what did you think about being on the other side of the camera? It's oh, it, it's fun in some ways because Josh is he's game for anything. Uh, and there were there were times when I had to get over some serious imposter syndrome with that. Because um, I'm, as an actor, I'm much more comfortable doing the thing or being told to do the thing. And if there's an adjustment to be made, I, you know, like, all right, my, my process then goes into like, okay, well, how do I do that differently? And I can adjust and I know me, um, but as uh, in, in directing, it's, uh, you know, you have to, just come up with a whole different vocabulary as to how to communicate that to someone else. Um, but then also like, and, and then also as an actor, not like give line readings, which no actor ever seems to like. Um, <laughs> and so my, my communication always, I feel like I was a little bit sensitive to that in, in that uh, uh, my directions would tend to be, you know, I would try to come up with, um, I don't know, different flavors or like, you know, so that, so that Josh could be a part of it as well. Um, and he, but it's tough working with him because he's so darn nice. And so if he thought I was just kind of just like, didn't know what I was saying, essentially, he kept it to himself. Uh -huh. he, he, he didn't, you know, so, but then there's like that, that, there's that imposter syndrome where I'm like, is he, you know, like actually think that I know what I'm talking about? Or is he, does he agree with me? Does he not agree with me? And uh, um, I don't know. I've, I've always uh, had a little bit too much humility at times to just nest. like I would probably be a terrible like ship captain in a storm <laughs> and that's kind of what you have to be sometimes in yeah. in you know uh you know when you're directing something blues clues and you is a little bit different because there's there's so many different people involved and you and, and you know I would have uh, either Maggie or Jackie there with me like helping me or Siobhan uh helping me basically to like an it, it's yeah. a little bit more of a collaboration than you know, it's like, we're going to sail there and not hit those rocks. And even though the seas are stormy, where you're going to have to trust me because I know what I'm talking about. And even if nobody else is looking at it, this is where we're going. It's, kinder, um, it's not quite like that. that. It was kinder, gentler, intrinsically motivated, Josh was too. <laughs> writing is hard though, too. My, my respect for all the writing was, I, I was, um, 
I was very surprised. And thankfully, Caitlin Hodson and I worked together on all of those, and she was very kind and patient with me. Um, and Kevin Delagula, just with, with, the, with the whole process, and you. Uh, so I, I thought going into that, I was like, I know this show. Like I've done this in like a million, like, you know, obviously, like, and, you know, so I had pitched a few ideas that I thought might be kind of fun and, and, and interesting to work on. And then when it came time to actually doing it and, you know, it has to all fit and has to really like, you know, it's, that's a hard. You've had those amazing big ideas to shake things up a little bit, which is what we needed and what we want, like just in the sense of pie in the sky. So that was awesome to see inside your brain with regard to blues <laughs> then to channel it right into the show was the job. Mm -hmm. What I liked about that is uh, the rap I wrote. Um, oh, I, I, I am now, as I say to my family and anybody who will listen to me on the street, I'm in the rap game now. And I demand respect. Let me hear the rap. Uh, I care. Oh, I, I don't think it was like, uh, uh, cause once, once PT, like, I think it uh, got augmented a little bit. It was just, I don't know. It was, uh, it was for, um, uh, villain ice, <laughs> which is great in the superhero episode where it's like, it's a rap about, um, it's like, you're not going to find a super secret layer. And I was just like, and I think the, the rap that we ended up, or the rhyme that we ended up coming up with was, uh, uh, my flow is cold, like a breeze through the trees, like thinking squad, put a stop to me, please. Um, but, uh, I wanted it to be because it's Mr. Salt rapping. Shh. Spoilers, spoilers ahead. Do we have to say spoilers? Spoilers. Yeah. Mr. Salt was villainized the whole time. Um, and I was, I wanted, I wanted all of the rap to be food related. So I wanted him to say, my flow is cold like a frozen quiche. Uh, Cause you freeze quiche sometimes in a freezer. It's a thing, it's a real thing. So my levels, I'm like, uh, basically like, uh, I don't know, preschool MF doom. Um, who do you think is the nicest out of the three of you? Oh, Josh, 100%. Then you mean as, in terms of like who's best for the earth? Josh, <laughs> Josh. probably. Sings the best. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the other thing about directing him. Uh, uh, I had a, a conversation recently with Lindsay, uh, who was one of the choreographers on the movie and it was like- Emmy nominated choreographer. I know, yeah. Oh, they-, they, they yeah, should Lindsay and Craig, that was, okay. that was so awesome. cool. What they did and working with Matt Stosky, I thought was really cool. Uh, the, the way they incorporated, you know, dancing for film, you know, like specifically how it was going to be used with the camera. I thought they were being very innovative and, and really cool. Our construction um, workers dancing in the middle of Times Square at like one in the morning is probably one of my favorite memories. That's so fun. It was ridiculous. Yeah. So is that for you? Is that one of those things where you just have to turn around and pinch yourself where you're like, cause you're like, this is actually happening right now. And oh, like, and I would leave like, until the last person would leave. Like that's what a groupie I was like being able to write that was so much fun. Cause we were talking to families, but then being able to sit there and watch it all happen. Cause we're on location, right? We're not in green screen. It was just too much fun yeah. to do that. Tell me about, um, also talk about your experiences. Cause you're also amazing on Gabby style house as a voice. Oh. Talk about your character there a little bit. Cat rat. Yeah, um, it's been so much fun. Well, there's a little bit of that. That's it's almost like a like a Blues Clues reunion because I get to work uh, the voice director on that is Katie McQueen Deeker and she's awesome and she's great. And so like you know when I we were in the the casting process for that and and I've worked with Jen Toomey and and oh, right. Toomey Toomey is also. Yeah, so it's like I've been able to work with these awesome people for a long time, which is you know. But Cat Rat's just such a, a fun, interesting character. Like, like when I do them, I'm like there in the booth. I always like stick my hands way up in my armpits for whatever reason. I don't know why. I'm just there and he's just like, nah, what's the big idea? Like, you know, it's like, but I, but I imagine him as a, um, I always imagine him as if for some reason his character was somebody from Hollywood Squares in the 70s. <laughs> I don't know. And he's just, yeah, I don't know. There's this like personality. And so it's, uh, it's fun to just be able to do uh, that voice. You have That's so a, many voices. You have so many characters. That's what's fascinating. <laughs> I don't think everyone knows that about you. All the different amazing, ridiculous characters you have inside of you. That was a lot of time, uh, you know, um, before television. Uh, no, I, there, were, there were various times. Like, uh, I don't know why I would like talk in the mirror a little bit here and there. And you know, when when I was uh, uh, younger, you know, I. I 
I was super into Jim Carrey and, you know, uh, when Ace sense. Ventura or The Mask came out, you know. And so, and, I, and, and later on, I'd heard that he spent a lot of time, because I didn't know anything about him uh, uh, personally until much, much later. But yeah, apparently he spent a lot of time just like entertaining himself, talking in the, in the mirror and like doing goofy voices and faces and stuff like that. I'm like, huh, well, that's pretty similar. I well. love it. I um, love it. Do you ever feel like the middle child for Blue's Clues? Like, how do you feel like in the triad? Well, now I'm the middle child. I used to feel like I was the young one and I was the baby and I get all the cool stuff and it's been robbed for me, you know? You had the cool outfit. Oh, that is true. Oh man, Steve was very jealous. Yeah. The fact that I didn't have to have my shirt tucked in and have that like, you know, where does the stripe land into relation to the belt? Like at all times. You know, it's it's a, a, a that particular um, set of uh, of frustrations, I suppose. And, got- yeah, and like a younger sibling or whatever, I was oblivious to like just how much better I had it. I was like, "What are you talking about, man? This sweater's hot." Um, <laughs> no, it was it was uh, it's it's been a lot a lot of fun, um, and I'm glad that that our relationship has kept up because anytime I get to hang out with Steve or hopefully work with him. Um, it's, it's so much fun. Some, something about our dynamic really just works. And you throw Josh into the mix and it's this whole other flavor. And it's just like the three of us really balance each other out well because we're not all bringing the same thing. It's not like, a, you know, when you're making this particular sandwich, it's not just bread, bread, and bread. It's, uh, it's different stuff. Um, <laughs> And also, like you said, I love that we have, I call it the Blue Clues Mafia, but maybe I shouldn't. But so many of us, right? When there was yeah, 80 people. It doesn't clubs, exist. We don't talk about know. it. It doesn't exist. But they're everywhere, right? So Katie is doing, yeah. still doing voiceovers. They're everywhere, right? Jen and Tracy are yeah. doing, Gabby. like, we're just like, we're all around. Mm-hmm. So we're good to you if you're good. But, you know, if we didn't like you, <laughs> just oh. kidding. <laughs> yeah, the then you swim the fishes. Um, thank you. You, you gave me way more time than I thought you would because you worked all morning already. So thank you. Yes, be well. The background that you had, because I think it tells your story. Oh, it just went away. Where did it go? Oh, my phone my is... Story? No. My the background? Wait. <laughs> my phone rang through my computer and then you went away. Life clue number, like, you know, it's like you got to hit that. You got to hit that do not disturb function. <laughs> Super important. <laughs>